Okay, I'm going to try solving po rational polynomial equations. Let's start off with a simple one. Let's say 7 divided by x minus 1 divided by 3x equals 5 divided by 3. Notice this is an equation, and when we were doing expressions, we had to get a common denominator before we could put the terms together. But since it's an equation, we can do something a little bit different, which will make our life easier. We can multiply all three of the terms by the common denominator. So in this case, our common denominator would have to have an x and a 3, and then this 3x is in both the x and the 3. So I'm going to multiply each part by 3x. So I'm going to multiply the 7 by 3x, the 1 by 3x, and the 5 by 3x. Notice, because it's an equation, if we do the same thing on both sides of the equation, that we're able to cancel. So when we have this term, this term, and this term, we're able to cancel out our x's. Oops, sorry. In this one, we're able to cancel out our 3's and, in this, and our x's. And in this term, we're able to cancel out our 3. Leaving us with 7 times 3 in this first term, 7 times 3, which gives us 21, minus, we bring down our negative, and then this has nothing to multiply the 1 by, so we just bring that down, equals, and then we have 5 times x, so we have 5x. This gives us 20 is equal to 5x. Therefore, and when divide each side by 5, we get 4 is equal to x, which would give us our solution. The only thing we have to be careful of is that we're not using a number that would make the denominator 0. In this case, the only one that makes the denominator 0 would be if x was equal to 0. And since our x is equal to 4, our solution does work. So that is our solution to this polynomial equation. Okay, we're going to deal with a, a little bit more complicated rational polynomial equation. And like in the other ones, we have to get a common denominator. But as usual, what we have to do first is factor, if we can. This one, of course, can't be factored. And the denominator automatically for a single number 2 is 2 over 1. And then we go ahead and we factor the last term, denominator, and that can be factored into x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now, when looking for our common denominator that we're going to multiply by, this denominator, x minus 1, is already in here. And 1 is always in every denominator because 1 times this is still it. And then we have um, x squared minus 1, which is x minus 1 times x plus 1. So we're going to take and we're going to multiply every single term in here by the common denominator, x minus 1, x plus 1. So first we're going to multiply it times the first term. So we're going to get 5x. And then we're going to multiply that by x 5x over x minus 1. Sorry, guys. x minus 1. And we're going to multiply that by x minus 1, x plus 1. So that's our first term multiplied by the common denominator. In our next one, we're going to have the minus 2. But instead of using x minus 1, x plus 1, I'm going to use the unfactored form because it's easier to multiply the 2 by that. And remember, this is 2 over 1. And then we get 14 over x squared minus 1. And once again, I'm going to use 
the unfactored form so it's easier to cancel. So notice in the first term we can cancel out the x minus 1. In this one nothing cancels and in this one the quantity x squared minus 1 cancels with the quantity x squared minus 1. Leaving us here with 5x times x plus 1 minus 2 times x squared minus 1 equals 14. Using the distributive property, we multiply our 5x in and we get 5x squared. And then 5x times 1 gives us 5x. We're going to multiply our negative 2 in. Negative 2 times x squared gives us negative 2x squared. And negative 2 times negative 1 gives me positive 2, and that all equals 14. Our next step to do is to combine our like terms. So we have 5x squared minus 2x squared gives us 3x squared. We don't have a combination, anything to combine with 5x, so we're going to have um, simply 5x, and then we have the plus 2 equals 14. Subtracting 14 from each side, we get 3x squared plus 5x minus 12 equals 0. And then using bottoms up, our first step is to multiply the 3 times the, times the 12 and get 36. So we're looking to factor. We factor into two binomials. We have an x and an x, and we ask, and then the plus sign comes down, positive times a negative is a negative, and then we ask ourselves what two numbers multiply give us 36. When we subtract them, we get 5, and we know that is 9 and 4. Now, here's the important part that you don't forget. When we use bottoms up, we multiply the 3 times the 12 to get our 36, so we have to compensate on both of these by dividing by 3. When we divide by 3, we simplify so that this binomial is x plus 3, and then we bottoms up and we get 3x minus 4 equals 0. That gives us two solutions using the zero product property. x will be equal to negative 3, or x will be equal to positive 4 thirds. This one's easy because negative 3 plus 3 gives us 0. And if you remember the shortcut for doing this method, if you take the opposite of this, which is going to be positive 4, divided by the coefficient of the variable, which is 3, giving us two, express two solutions. Now we need to be sure that the solutions do not or can, uh, will not make our denominator 0. Looking back up here at the denominator, we know that 1 would make this denominator 0. And this one's okay. Can't do anything different. And also negative 1. So we have to exclude the values 1 and negative 1. But since neither one of our solutions or those numbers, these are both solutions to our rational polynomial equation. Okay, guys, here's a little bit more complicated one. And um, I do, I know you never say I'd give you a hard one, but we won't have too many of these on our assessments. But in your homework assignments, you will have a few. And our first step is to factor our denominator so we can get a common denominator. This one's already simplified, as is this one. And this one using bottoms up, and I'm not going to go through bottoms up. Y'all know how to do that already. I'm going to have x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. And that's the factor. And therefore, since x minus 2 is already in here and 3x plus 2 is already in here, that is our common denominator. Once again, I've shown you on the two previous examples step by step. In this example, we're going to cut out a couple of steps because I know you don't like writing every single step and neither do I. So let's multiply this each of these terms by a common denominator of x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. So we start off with the first one and we have 2x and 
since the x minus 2 is in a denominator, it will cancel with an x minus 2, leaving us with 3x plus 2. Then we get the quantity 4x minus 1, and our 3x plus 2 in our denominator will cancel with the 3x plus 2, leaving us x minus 2. And then finally, the nice part is in this last term, since this denominator is the same as our common denominator, everything cancels out, leaving us with 17x plus 4. Now, if you need some work on canceling how these denominators multiply, look at the previous two videos in which I give full explanations. In this one, then, we multiply in, okay, and... I'm going to multiply 2x times 3x, which is going to give me 6x squared. And then 2x times 2, which gives me 4x. And then we get to our negative here. Now the negative sometimes will throw us off, because I have to remember to carry the negative into each time I multiply by the 4x, and each time I multiply by the negative 1. Um, so let's start off with this first one. Negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared. Then negative 4x times negative 2 is positive 8x. Now we start with our negative again. Negative times negative 1 is a positive 1. And positive 1 times x is positive x. And then we get negative times negative 1 is positive 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and that still equals 17x plus 4. Our next step is to combine our like terms. Well, we have a couple of like terms here. We have 6x squared and negative 4x squared, which gives us 2x squared. We have 4x, positive 8x, and one more x, gives us 13x minus the 2 equals 17x plus 4. And as I said before, whenever we're solving equations, we have to set them equal to 0. So we're going to bring 17x plus 4 over to this side of the equation by subtract, bring down our 2x squared we're going to subtract 17x from 13x, which gives us negative 4x. And we're going to subtract 4 from negative 2, which gives us negative 6. Then after we set it equal to 0, our next step is to take out what's common. So we're going to take out a 2. We notice a 2 goes into 2, 4, and 6, which gives us a more simplified quadratic to factor. We factor our quadratic into two binomials, x, x, we bring down our minus, negative times negative is a positive, and then we x ourselves with two numbers multiplied, give us three, when we subtract them we get two, and the bigger number goes first, so we get three and one. And so now, using the zero product property, we have two solutions, x is equal to three, or x is equal to negative one because we're looking to see what number makes each of these terms zero. Three would make that term zero. Negative one would make that term zero. We really don't have to worry about the two. If you remember from when we were solving equations before, we, could, we don't have to worry about the two because two will never equal zero. Or if you really want to, you can go ahead and divide both sides by two prior to this step. And these would cancel, and 0 over 2 would still be 0. So we kind of, that's just a reminder of using it. We just have to be careful if there's a variable on the outside that we also included. But in this case, there is no variable. Our answers then, our solutions therefore, are 3 and negative 1. But we have to check to make sure that it's not a solution that would make our denominator 0. And the only numbers that make our denomina denominator 0 are 2, which would make this one 0 and this one, or negative two-thirds, which would make these zero, and since neither one of those solutions is that, these are the solutions that will work in this large polynomial, rational polynomial equation. 
I'm going to do a couple more examples in class. So be sure you look at the videos and come back to me with any questions you have. See you tomorrow.